this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Leonie Strymer V2 Plus, but with a twist, because these are the ones that work with the 600 watt PCIe Gen 5 cables compatible with the NVIDIA's 40 series graphics cards and beyond. And they come in three different models, one that will work with three 8-pin PCIe Gen 4 connectors, and then two different variants that will work with the 600 watt power connectors. So these are designed to work with PCIe Gen 5 PSUs and also with your standard power supply unit, depending on what setup you've got. So you can see basically one end will default to that standard connector that will work with the 40 series graphics cards, and then the other will work with whatever PSU you've got set up. And they're slightly different from thickness and different setup. So I'm gonna show you the installation process for these now and talk about the differences between them, the basic setup, and how you'd also use it with the standard Strano Plus V2 controller with the 24 pin power supply cable, which you'd have to buy separately. So as you can see, these are the three cables out of the box. You'll notice the bottom one is slightly thinner than the top one, but those are the same sort of 600 watt logic. And then the middle one is obviously your traditional connectors. Now in the box, they come with this standard RGB cable. So there's a single RGB connector that comes out of the RGB Strymer cables, plugs into this, and then has a five volt RGB cable that connects up to your motherboard. I'll show you that in a second, but you can see it here. So that's the real basic setup. So let's just say if you just bought this cable, that is how you connect up the RGB lighting. Then the RGB would be controlled by your motherboard and this is how you do it. So here's a motherboard demonstration. On this motherboard in the bottom row down there, you'll find a five volt RGB connector. It has three pins on it. Don't try and use the 12 volt with four pins on it because it won't work. You will find these in different places on different motherboards. They're usually on the bottom, sometimes on the top. It will vary. You should find at least one on most modern motherboards and you'll see that it'll plug in there and then you can control it with the ROG Armory crate in this instance and have a set up there. Then the power connection is fairly straightforward. So this is an NZXT C1200 and you'll notice there's a 600 watt power cable connector in the bottom right there. So there's a PCIe Gen 5 connector down there and you have that 600 watt cable. Now the Strymer V2 Plus is basically designed as an extension cable. So you'd use the standard power cable that comes with your power supply unit, connect it up to that and then run that cable through to the back of your case into a position where it can connect to the RGB cable and then that plugs into your graphics card. So you have to obviously still hide away some of this cable, but obviously the idea being that it makes the front of your case look a lot nicer. And then you have control over the RGB lighting. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is very important, especially with the 40 series cards. Obviously, there's a lot of power flowing through here. So you need to make sure that each part of this cable is plugged in properly, seated well and clipped into place. You'll notice there's a little clip on both the cables and on the power supply unit. Uh, make sure that's hooked in properly because if it isn't it can cause problems and there were a lot of initial problems with the 40 series cards because people weren't plugging their cables in far enough so make sure you push it all the way in until it clips in so that's now the power connected from the power supply unit to the strimer and then you need to connect it up to your graphics card so this is a gigabyte rtx 4070 ti and you'll see that the other end of the strama v2 plus plugs into that now obviously i'm demoing this all outside the case just so you can see how it works and the logic of it quite easily. You wouldn't actually do this until it was fully installed, but I just wanted to show some of how all of this works. Now there is an interesting quirk here that you'll see in a second, but the logic for it is basically make sure again that this cable is seated as well as possible and they're pushed all the way in until it clips. I haven't quite done it here and there's a reason for that that I'll show you in a second, but once you've installed it, make sure it's pushed all the way in. One problem I did find with this setup is that it has pushed over the fins on the heat sink. So it's actually done a little bit of damage to the graphics card. But that's not a problem because you'll see that the clips on the 600 watt power connector are removable. So you can actually pull those side bits off and take that off. In the instructions, it notes that it's not actually a problem. That's just for design aesthetic purposes. So you can remove this and then connect it up. Now I will note that I'm not actually doing this in the best possible way. You'll see that my cable is sort of coming off from the side. Really you'd want to run it from underneath the motherboard if possible. I can't do it in this case at the moment because I have that M2 expander card in the bottom. But you will notice there is a slight angle here. Make sure you don't have any tension 
on that connector because that can also lead to problems. Now that was the basic setup, but what I want to show you now is how you'd also set it up to so control it with L Connect 3. So this is the control box that comes with a 24 pin power supply cable. I've done a video on this separately, but if you're buying the RGB cable that connects to your motherboard as well, you get this little controller, which enables you to plug that fat cable in to one end of the control box. And then you have the ability to plug in the, obviously the 600 watt RGB Strymer cable in there as well. So you basically can connect up two RGB cables to this control box. And then this control box then connects up to your motherboard using a USB connection and also potentially with RGB five volt header as I showed before. So this basically gives you control over those RGB lighting strips via L Connect 3. If you're also running Li and Lee fans, as you saw I was at the beginning, this is handy. You have to run two controllers separately in order to do it, but then means that you can have RGB lighting across both of those and you can sync the lighting up. It's not necessarily an essential purchase. If you just want to run the RGB cables for your graphics card, you can do it without purchasing this control box, because as I said, you can control the RGB lighting from your motherboard, but you will get a better effects if you buy the full system and have this controller because it will give you more RGB lighting options via L Connect 3. And then once again, that has a 5 volt RGB header or a USB connection. Now you only need one or the other. You can plug both in, but basically it gives you different logic and control. The USB is for L Connect 3. The RGB connection is for controlling it with your motherboard software. And then you have a SATA power connector. So once again, you need to plug in the USB connection to your motherboard. You can see that on the bottom middle usually. You'll find one, two, or three USB headers like this. So you can see this one's got three, for example. You can connect up one of those, and then you just basically run that cable from this control box through to the motherboard like that and connect it up. You'll see on the side of the control box there is an option for two different cable connections, and then there's one at the end for the 24 pin. You need to plug in your cable to there and then make sure the switch is flicked over to the right direction depending on which one you've plugged in. So you can see me doing that installation here, again, with the 600 watt power connector. You need to make sure it fits in and then push it into there and then flick the switch over so it's closest to that. And then that will make sure that that's working properly. So that's the more in-depth installation process there. Same sort of logic. Obviously, that control box is plugged into the motherboard, but it also requires SATA power. So you do need to connect it up to a power supply unit, which I'll show you in a second. And then you need to find somewhere to be able to run this cable through to the front. Ideally, you want to do it from the bottom. I'm going to do a build in the near future in a different case. I'll hopefully be able to show you the perfect setup for that. But if you don't know already, this is the SATA connector for your power supply unit. So this should have come with your PSU. It plugs into the peripheral and the SATA connectors. And essentially, this cable is used for various different things, including hard disk drives, 2.5 inch SSDs. RGB fan controllers and other things and in this instance the controller for the Strymers as well so you'll see that it has these flat connectors on it daisy chainable so you can connect up several different things but that is the connector that you need so then you run those cables through now as I said I want to make another quick note of this because it's important it's very important that you make sure you don't have a lot of tension on the cable that's plugging into your graphics card. You can see here that I don't have a lot of flexibility with this. Ideally, I'd have come from the bottom and plugged in from below because you really shouldn't be pulling it off to the sides. So I'm showing you what not to do if you can avoid it. I should have come from the bottom near where the fans are and then straight up if possible. It would have made the design look a lot nicer and you're not putting any unnecessary tension on that graphics card cable. And here you can see this is the slightly different version. So this one requires three 8-pin PCIe connectors. So this is more of your traditional power supply units if you happen to have them. So here's a demo of that just to show you the logic of it. These are the PCIe connectors for the NZXT C1000 PSU, a slightly different power supply unit, but they're basically similar logic depending on what PSU you've got. Then one end plugs into the PCIe connectors on the power supply unit and then the other end will connect up to that power cable. Now, if you have them, obviously it'd be preferable to use three separate cables, but you may find that you have some that are daisy chained between them. You will find notes on the box itself that you can get 450 watts if the power supply cable is eight AWG and 600 watts if it's 16 AWGs. 
basically you want to make sure if possible you've got three power connectors running into there rather than the daisy chain ones but i'll leave information on that in the description and you can see that you can connect these up so you basically have to pinch these together to push them in again make sure everything's seated and clipped in as well as you possibly can you don't want any loose connections at any part of this setup because it could lead to problems a lot of power flowing through this cable essentially but you can see you've got three cables going into one it's much more obvious like this than it is with the standard connector the other point of interest here is you can also swap things around so the way the strimer works is essentially it's just some rgb cables sitting on top of the power cables and they're only held in place with a number of little clips so you can see that there's some see-through plastic ones that you can unclip from here that are sort of hidden away they're designed to keep the cables looking nice and neat and not moving around you can take those off and then the black clips at either end can also be removed and the reason for this is you might want to flip the cable over depending on how it's set up in your case where or which direction it's coming from or just the design of your case let's say you're vertically mounting your gpu for example that might put a slightly different angle on the cables so you now have the option of turning that cable completely the other way up because obviously the 600 watt power cable that connects up to your graphics card isn't the same design on both sides so it only goes in one way so it's nice to have the option to be able to flip this over so you see that you just have to take all those clips off and then you can basically just take the entire thing apart which obviously makes life a little bit easier then you just need to flip that cable over and then replace all the clips so that you're basically turning it over completely and then you have a slightly different setup so i thought it was worth showing this so you can see there's quite a lot of flexibility in what you do with this setup and how you make things look and also which one you purchase to fit into your system and the way you connect it up to your motherboard or to your system depending on whether you're using just this cable or multiple different Li and Li rgb things so you do have a lot of different options there and then the standard setup just all clips back together and then you've got 600 watt connector on one end and then the PCIe connectors on the other. And it's all nice and neat with those clips as well. So they make life a lot easier because they're adjustable. And then you can see the final product here with all its RGB glory. Obviously I have the original 24 pin Strymer Plus V2 power cable on the motherboard as well as the Li and Lee SL120 V2s on here. And you can see the final RGB effects in there as well. Download L Connect 3 and dive into the settings there and play around with the RGB until you're happy. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.